This video is going to show some of the problems I experienced with upgrading Ubuntu 21.04 to 21.10. It's going to show the error that I received and how I managed to fix this. This is my main laptop. I don't have the ability to capture the screen on this, so many of the screenshots are taken with a mobile phone pointed at the laptop screen. But I will explain the steps that I took to resolve this. So I've been running Linux as the main operating system on my laptop for many years, mostly using Ubuntu or one of its variants. During that time, I've usually followed the typical upgrades, although sometimes delayed if I've been working on something important. Upgrades are provided every six months and normally the upgrades just work. Still a good idea to make backups before you do any upgrade, as you would with any system really. There are a couple of times I've decided to do reinstalls to refresh the image Normally, it's just a case of running the automatic upgrade and it works. If you're not so keen on running the latest versions of software, there's also the option to only follow long-term support upgrades, which come out every two years and are supported for five years from their release date. So if you're an enterprise environment, it may be more appropriate just to stick to the LTS release the last LTS being 20.04 and the next will be 22.04, which is due to be released in April 22. So I received the usual message that there was a upgrade available and I just started the upgrade straight away. It looked promising at first. They went through the process and started downloading the required files downloaded all those then when it was in the install stage all of a sudden the screen was replaced with this error message I've not seen this before the whole, basically the whole screen was uh, this white screen with the the error in the middle looks more reminiscent of the blue screen of death that you used to get regularly from Windows but unfortunately it gave no indication as what the problem was, just something's gone wrong. As you can see, there is a logout option. You click on that um, option, but I just got another error message. Oh no, something has gone wrong. This says the problem has occurred and system can't recover. Please contact a system administrator. Clearly something's gone wrong. I didn't want to just reboot just in case it was still installing in the background. Never really want to reboot a system that's mid-upgrade. So I hit um, the usual Control alt f 3 uh, to get a new terminal to have a look. And this brings up a, a separate text-only terminal window that you can log in and have a look at things. So I could see some updates in the Debian Package Manager log. Um, significant part being that it was no longer add into that log, it was just uh, stopped with the messages that had been received so far. I also looked for a running process, which would indicate it was still updating, but there's nothing showing. And I wasn't sure at this point whether to try and restart the upgrade from the command line or to try a reboot. After Debating this for a short while, I just decided to, to give it a reboot and see if it could recover itself. And unfortunately, this just left me back on the same screen as before. So this is what I was getting from reboot and it wasn't very promising. So what I did, I rebooted again. This time went to the grub loader and chose other options and then launched the recovery option. Uh, fortunately, this gives you some options to try and recover the system. I first enabled networking. I was just connected to a physical LAN connection. Uh, potentially that could have helped. I'm not sure it was really necessary because it had already downloaded the packages. It may have been useful if it decided it needed to download something else. And then I dropped to the root shell 
so that I could work through the problem. So as you can see here, it says that um, when I dropped into the, the maintenance mode, I tried to run sudo up to upgrade and it just told me that the Debian package tool was interrupted and I must manually run the minus minus configure minus a option. So I did that, took a, a reasonable length of time, but it kept giving more error messages due to dependency problems. eventually saying that processing was halted as there were too many errors. So I then tried an apt upgrade again. This prompted to run the fix broken install. So I ran that. Again, took that a while to run. And then I ran apt upgrade again and this time you can see these are the packages it decided it was now able to install. 1160 packages to upgrade, 38 new and none to remove, 25 not to upgrade. So I set this run in and obviously this was going to take some time to install those, although they were already downloaded. It's not a quick process to upgrade them. So I left it running overnight, came back in the morning and fortunately upgrade complete. So it had completed the install and I found that I could now reboot and I could log in. And this, could, this worked and I ended up at the desktop can see. The next thing I decided to do was to update the display link drivers. These are required because I've got a second screen which is on USB-C and I've created a separate video on how to do this. It's from my previous upgrade to 21.04 and it explains how to switch to the open source drivers, install the proprietary display link drivers and switch to x.org if that's what you need to do afterwards. I've already got a video on that so I won't go into detail here but I will put a link in the description and there should be one up in the top right hand corner. This Install seemed to be partially successful. The desktop did expand over two screens immediately, but it did flicker and lose the screen a few times. Rebooted a couple of times now and that all appears to have fixed itself and it's all working correctly now. So I've now upgraded this successfully, or so it appeared. I switched to x.org just so that I can use simple screen recorder which doesn't work with Wayland and this is a, a tool that I like to use. But I've now got this message up here. Um, error occurred, the error message was error broken count is greater than zero so there are some looks like unmet dependencies for some of the packages that were installed. So we'll have a look and see what it says under the updates. Okay, so not all updates can be installed. Run a partial upgrade to install as many as possible. So let's try that. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's major problems. It looks one package to be installed, lib z image two. Remove lib avr 
AV resample and there's 20 to be upgraded so let's start that. And then finally, there's 57 packages going to be removed. So I'm a bit unsure about these, why Firefox would be there. Um, the GNU C++ compiler, my guess is that it's installed a different version. It looks like the, the only browser that's on there is Chromium. I'm going to let it go ahead and remove that and we can always just re-edit back afterwards. Okay, so that seems to have worked. Um, let's do another check, see if there's any other updates. So it's now showing up to date. So I'm going to just try rebooting at this point to make sure that I haven't broken anything else but other than that looking good so far so I've rebooted now <coughs> and as you can see the error message doesn't appear at all now I've done a bit of research as to why Firefox is gone it's instead of being a standard Debian package it's now available as a snap package my guess is that it didn't install the snap package because of the problems we had with the install failing. So I can try and do that. My only concern is Snap does have a bit of a reputation for being slow. So we can try and install it. And if it doesn't, if I'm not happy with the performance, then I can always remove that and go back to the original Debian but it is Mozilla that is officially supporting this Snap channel, so it should get all the latest updates. Looks like it's gonna take a while for that to install. In the meantime, just have a quick look around and have a look at what's changed. So. The kernel's now at 5.13 and there's some additional hardware support and things like that. And the significant change I think is the no version of GNOME has moved from 3.38 to GNOME 40. So that's a, a slightly different look and feel do like this and this pops up really quickly this looks quite nice let's try launching Firefox now I'll add that to the favorites first because one of the other things you'll notice is the ru rubbish bin has now been added to the menu bar other than that really it does look very similar there's not a huge amount of changes from the previous version. 
front of the NVIDIA packages. The NVIDIA drivers are supposed to now include support for Wayland. But as I say, because I use simple screen recorder, I run X to org anyway. I, maybe that's something I'll have to change in the future either. Simple screen recorder may add that support or I may have to switch to a different pack, uh, screen capture program. Okay, so it's got quite a long start-up time by the looks of it, but once it's started... It appears to be... Going well, and videos, YouTube seems to work okay. So I'm going to actually stick with that and give it a bit longer. So it did seem to have a, a long startup time, but it seems to be quite responsive now, but it's only very limited testing. This is literally the first time I've been using this since I've upgraded. So as you can see, we did have some problems with the upgrade and potentially they looked kind of scary, but it wasn't that difficult to fix uh, by switching to another terminal. So once we switched to the ter a separate terminal, we were able to fix that. It did need a, a bit of knowledge of command line tools about uh, basically running the apt update and following the instructions when there was a problem. Useful to know we've got multiple terminals available. It's Control Alt F3 is the, the one I switched to. Control Alt F2 will take you back to the graphical screen, control alt F1, take you back to the login screen. And you can always use those to help fix problems that you might encounter. And there you go. Uh, hopefully this will carry on working and be continue to be my main operating system on my laptop for the foreseeable future. So thanks for watching. I'll be returning with making projects more in future videos. I just thought this was a quick one I could uh, put out to help people that have similar problems to the one I encountered. And hopefully that will help people get back on track. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please click on the subscribe button, click on the bell icon to get notified and I hope to see you again on a future video.